Hello, and welcome to the National Endowment for the Arts Arts Education Webinar on Collective Impact Funding Insights. My name is Ayana Hudson, the Director of Arts Education for the National Endowment for the Arts. Before we begin, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. You are all muted and will only be able to hear the presenters. You can submit questions or comments at any time using the Q&A box below the PowerPoint. We'll do our best to address as many questions as possible during the time we have for the webinar. Please do not use the raise hand button. This webinar will be posted in the podcast, webcast, and webinar section of our website in a few days so you can refer to it in the future. Today we will focus on broad insights from across the 15 arts education collective impact projects funded by the NEA to date, as well as share some specific examples from funded projects. Funding for collective impact is key to helping the NEA achieve its vision for arts education. Every student is engaged and empowered through an excellent arts education. With a focus on pre-K through 12th grade students, the NEA funds direct learning projects for students to increase knowledge and skills in the arts, professional development projects for the educators and community leaders who support students, and collective impact projects for the systems to ensure that all students across entire schools, school districts, and or states, and communities of all sizes participate in the arts over time. I encourage you to peruse the NEA website at arts.gov for more information about all the project types we fund in arts education. Today, we're going to talk exclusively about our collective impact grants. If you want to know more general information about collective impact in arts education, I encourage you to visit our archive of previous webinars, all listed on this slide. I would also like to mention a wonderful free site, the Collective Impact Forum, where for those practicing collective impact, you can find the tools, resources, and advice you need. NEA Collective Impact Grants can either be for emerging projects, projects that are in the initial phase of work, and or are establishing an arts education plan, or for sustaining projects that already have an arts education plan in place and are advancing critical strategies to increase access to arts education. The NEA guidelines define five principles for collective impact projects. Partnerships, data, planning, programming, and evaluation. All projects, whether emerging or sustaining, should embrace these principles which may be ongoing and where one or more may occur at any point during the requested period of support for NEA funding. So now let's briefly review these principles one at a time. Partnership. Cross-sector partners work to determine a common vision, define goals, develop strategies, and identify measurable objectives for arts education. Data. Data informs decision making. This may include asset mapping of community resources, collecting student data, or creating new data collection tools. Planning. A plan outlines system-wide arts education implementation. This should include a description of each partner's role in achieving the common vision. Programming. Activities support the plan, like direct services to students, professional development, curriculum design, or convening stakeholders. And evaluation. A shared measurement system assesses the impact of planning and programming and is disseminated. Through two rounds of FY15 funding, the agency has awarded 15 collective impact grants, both emerging and sustaining. 
This map gives you an idea where coll collective impact grantees are located. You'll see the yellow dots and those represent the 15 collective impact grantees and it also gives you a sense of the geographical diversity of these projects as well. There are six emerging collective impact projects. You'll see them here listed on this slide. And I want to talk just briefly about the insights from these groups of projects. We know the early work of these grantees is really focused on identifying cross-sector partners, collecting and analyzing data, and creating a common vision, a shared plan, and a common strategy to move the work forward. And let's talk just briefly about our grantee, the Newark Arts Council in Newark, New Jersey, just as an example. The project the NEA is funding is cultivating creative Newark through collective impact. In this emerging project, 40 plus local arts organizations, artists and arts funders, researchers, Newark public schools, and community organizations will collaborate to ensure that young people in the diverse and changing city have access to sustained quality arts experiences. Through citywide convenings, site visits, and ongoing sustainability meetings among the partners to facilitate communication, these partners will work together to conduct a data analysis and review young people's access to arts education services in Newark develop a common language and shared expectations about quality, sequence, and continuity of arts learning across disciplines, and articulate a shared vision for arts education and the development of an action plan that outlines programming strategies, as well as a strategy to communicate the action plan to a broader community. This slide lists the sustaining collective impact projects. With these established projects, the important things the grantees are focusing on include cross-sector partnerships, collection of student data, moving forward the next phase of programming and their collective impact work, and evaluating the impact that these projects are having in their communities. For Metropolitan Nashville Public Schools, the Music Makes Us initiative, part of the NEA grant is supporting the strengthening, refinement, and expansion of meaningful stakeholder engagement in the cross-sector network. This work includes assessing and identifying stakeholder gaps in the current membership of the Advisory Council, cultivating new relationships with music industry and business organizations, and providing key stakeholders with training to step into better defined action-oriented roles and leadership. The agency's grant to Big Thought in Dallas, Texas is supporting the next phase of programming in Big Thought's collective impact work, the Dallas City of Learning. Over the course of summers 2015 and 2016, Big Thought will create arts learning pathways for standards-based tours, workshops, camps, and other events. At the completion of their experiences, students will earn digital badges recognizing their level of accomplishment. A longitudinal study will be launched early in the project to measure long-term impact following students as they build their badge backpacks, digital resumes documenting their developing interest and advancements. One really interesting insight across all the collective impact projects funded by the NEA is that every project, whether emerging or sustaining, includes data. From asset mapping to analyzing and collecting student data, as well as the creation of new data collection tools, like an arts education report card. Data is core to collective impact efforts and is an important factor across the board. Let's take a look now at what we know about emerging and sustaining projects collectively. Across the 15 projects, 
there are 81 diverse cross-sector partners bringing their strengths, talents, and assets to this work. 9.6 million students will participate in the arts over time. The NEA's total investment to date and collective impact is $1.2 million. And this $1.2 million investment has leveraged $8.3 million to advance arts education in communities and school districts across the nation. Let's talk a little bit more about the 81 partners across the collective impact grantees. And looking at the 15 grantees, we know there are a, a range of cross-sector partners engaged in this work. You see on this slide the variety of the partners, from school reform focus organizations, to funders and philanthropists, to for-profit organizations, as well as non-profit arts organizations. In fact, for the Cathedral Arts Projects, Any Given Child Jacksonville Project, the steering committee is comprised of Jacksonville Public Education Fund, the Cultural Council of Greater Jacksonville, the Community Foundation for Northeast Florida, Jacksonville Chamber of Commerce, Jacksonville Jaguars, the NFL team, Florida Blue Health Insurance Company, Haskell Design Engineering and Construction Firm, Jacksonville University, Jacksonville Symphony Orchestra, and Coomer Museum of Arts and Gardens. And looking across the grantees, we notice that there are grantees in five of the states that participated in the NEA's Education Leaders Institute, Alabama, California, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Washington. And just briefly about Eli, over the course of five years, from 2008 to 2012, the NEA provided leadership and reflective space through the Education Leaders Institute for 29 executive level cross-sector state teams to address the goal of ensuring access to arts education for all students. Create California was launched as the result of California's participation in the NEA Education Leaders Institute in 2011. Create California promotes systemic change in California's education system by making the arts central to the everyday K through 12 curriculum. With a leadership council consisting of five organizations, including the California Alliance for Arts Education, the California Department of Arts Education, the California Arts Council, the California PTA, and the California County Superintendent's Educational Services Association, NEA funding will build the organizational capacity and infrastructure of the Leadership Council, cultivate public will and gather baseline data for an arts education report card, and convene stakeholders across the state to facilitate effective collaboration and trends in the field. And looking across all collective impact projects, the NEA is funding urban, suburban, multi-state, as well as national initiatives, like the Kennedy Center's Any Given Child Initiative. Any Given Child is a national effort to bring access, balance, and equity in arts education opportunities for K-8 students in sites around the country. But the agency is also funding rural projects as well. Let's take our grantee, Jones County Public Schools in Trenton, North Carolina, as an example. NEA funding is supporting the development of a district-wide arts education plan for the 1,260 students attending this, the school district, as well as professional development to support the development of an arts-infused creative culture at each one of these smaller schools. The project is a partnership among the school district, the a schools program, Crayola, and the Jones County Arts Council. In addition, the North Carolina Arts Council, home of the a schools program, participated in the Education Leaders Institute in 2008. 
Another insight across the funded collective impact projects is that for six of the grantees, the school district or an office of education was the applicant for the project. So we're seeing school districts taking ownership of this work and serving as, as a key partner in this work as well. And let's take Seattle Public Schools and Seattle, Washington as an example. The project is the implementation of Creative Advantage, which is a partnership between Seattle Public Schools, Seattle's Office of Arts and Culture, the Seattle Foundation, Arts Corps, Arts Ed Washington, and Seattle Art Museum. It ensures equitable access to arts education for all students in Seattle Public Schools. It provides arts leadership principal coaches who will work with schools to refine arts plans with a focus on closing access gaps, alignment with educational standards, and K-12 sequential arts learning. It matches arts partners with schools based on analysis of school arts plans. And it gathers baseline data for a longitudinal database to track student growth of outcomes across all creative advantage schools. In addition, close to 100% of projects funded are working in partnership with state or local arts councils. You see them presented here on this slide. Arts councils are bringing their deep knowledge in arts education, expertise in planning, strategy, as well as funding to advance this work in communities across the country. The final insight is around backbone organizations or managing partners. What we know from the agency's first Nuts and Bolts Collective Impact webinar, which is archived on our, web, on our website, is that collective impact will not be successful without a backbone organization. In fact, the NEA's guidelines state that these projects must have a managing partner coordinating the efforts of the partners. What we're seeing across the funded projects is that the backbone organizations come in all shapes and sizes depending on the unique assets and circumstances of the community. We have seen new nonprofit organizations being established to support this work, like Ingenuity Incorporated, founded in 2011, which provides vision, leadership, and coordination of the collective impact efforts to implement Chicago Public Schools' comprehensive arts education plan. We're also seeing established organizations taking on the coordination of this work like Young Audiences Incorporated of Houston, Texas, which serves as the managing partner for Houston Arts Partners, which is ensuring every child in the Houston Independent School District develops academically, creatively, emotionally, and cognitively through the arts. And we're even seeing a university, Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts at North Adams, Massachusetts, serving as a managing partner for a multi-state effort to examine best arts education practices in rural areas. If you're interested in applying for a grant in Collective Impact, I want to tell you about the next opportunity to apply. The next deadline is coming up July 23rd. The guidelines are listed on the NEA's website at arts.gov, along with the contact information for the entire arts education team. Please be in touch with one of the four arts education specialists, Denise Brandenburg, Nancy Doherty, Lakita Edwards, or Terry Liu, before applying. Contact information for each specialist is listed on the agency's website at arts.gov. Now we have some time for some questions from the field. I'm going to introduce my colleague Terry Liu in, in one moment. And I also invite you to join the conversation on Twitter. To do so, please use this hashtag NEA Arts Ed. So now I'm going to turn it over to Terry Liu to answer some questions um, from the field. So Terry, let's start with backbone organizations. And we just had a, uh, just shared some insights of what we're seeing 
for backbone organizations across the 15 projects that we're funding. So we have a question. Can you talk more about backbone organizations? Do they have to be the applicant for the NEA grant? Well, they don't have to be the applicant. They don't, sorry, you don't have to be the applicant. Any nonprofit organization with three years of programming is eligible to be the applicant. In some cases, the managing partner, which uh, Ayana discussed uh, earlier, described earlier, might not have the capacity to be the grantee, but they have the capacity to be the managing partner to pull everyone together. And if um, John Kania we uh, talks about collective impact, it's one of the the backbone organization is one of the key uh, aspects of it. We describe the um, principles slightly differently, but if you consider the NEA uh, five principles for uh, collective impact, success, partnerships, data, planning, programs, evaluation, you know, having a managing partner to, to organize all that is very important. Thank you, Terry. Um, the next question is, are applicants required to create a vision and mission statement with their partners for these grants? Well, you know, having, uh, being able to articulate what the partners are working, how the partners work together, and what the roles of each partner is, uh, and having some sense on each organization's uh, vision and role in the in the collective impact partnership is, of course, very important to describe to the panel so they get a sense on um, how everyone's working together. I don't think you necessarily have to articulate each one's vision, but um, to give a good sense on the organization, uh, what they do and what their role is, what their history is in the partnership, and how they uh, uh, will be moving forward in the collective impact. And Terry, here's another question. Can a state agency apply for a collective impact grant supporting arts education? Uh, it's a matter of eligibility again. State arts agencies uh, can't apply to uh, uh, the Artworks Grants for Arts Projects category, but they can certainly be a partner. And another question is, can you talk a little bit more about the types of data that are being collected to support this work? Well, as you uh, ex uh, described in, in this uh, webinar here, data is very important in all phases. And um, so whatever the current project is that you're applying for support for during the grant period, you know, the activity and the goals you have during this grant period that you're applying for uh, that's going to have evaluation and data specific to your goals for the project. And um, also to give some sense on how that data is, is common to the uh, goals of all the partners. You know, what's the common data aspect of it? Terry, what are the indicators that a group of partners are at a stage where they're ready to submit a sustaining grant rather than an emerging grant application? I think that's it's one of the things that you'll just have to figure out yourselves where you are. Um, you can see that um, the organizations that are applying at the emerging level are maybe still developing uh, communications. They're still trying to gather data about you know, how to move forward. In some senses, there's a need for developing the communication mechanisms, you know, so that uh, working together, you know, you can um, uh, have a sense on what the goals are over the future. It could be, you know, trying to develop what the, the vision is. And in that case, it would, it would certainly be more of an emerging type of project that you could probably articulate better for the panel. Something that is already um, sustaining and looking for support for sustaining, at that point, they may already uh, have uh, goals that they can see are happening in the benefits to uh, arts learning for the young people. And in that case, that kind of data would be um, probably what you're collecting there that can inform everyone uh, together as collective uh, interest in the data being collected and helping to move the partnership forward. And Terry, here's a, another question. 
It says, in general, are the grant funds for a collective impact project distributed to all named participating organizations? Uh, that's a um, difficult question for me to answer. I think um, you know, this is something that, uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that would be the case. You're applying for a specific project, so we'd be looking for a budget in uh, the application which is uh, appropriate to the specific project you're applying for. It's, you know, it's like any other grant, you know, it's a grant for a specific project. It's a project that is in uh, part of an ongoing collective impact system. And so you'll want to describe how the project is moving the system forward. But in the end, it is a specific project. You'll have specific project goals and an appropriate budget for it. And Terry, are multi-arts partnerships more likely to be funded? Well, partnerships are, are key to what collective impact is all about. So it's not necessarily how many partners or I think it's more who they are and how they've come together, why, why they, they've come together as partners, what the common goals are, how, what the common vision is, uh, what kinds of activities they'll be doing together, the ongoing activities, um, how communication is uh, done, uh, what kind of ongoing meetings you have, you know, how the uh, advisory boards uh, are working together. I think those are the things that the panel will be looking for. And Terry, here's a, a question about the amount um, that uh, a lead applicant can request. It says, I noticed the larger grant amounts for the collective impact projects. Can we still apply for collective impact if our amount requested is under $50,000? Yes, you can. Uh, this is um, the same grant category. It's, it's a third grant type that we have in arts education. We have direct learning, we have professional development, and we have collective impact. And they're all uh, under the same guidelines. You can request as few as 10000 and as many as $100,000. And someone did notice that the emerging projects have been around $50,000, just, again, depending on the, the project and the, the size of the project. And for the emerging collective impact projects, can you talk about the expectation for data, and I know you talked uh, briefly about data before, but here's another question about data, specifically for the emerging projects, um, both in terms of collection and or incorporation of data for the projects. I would imagine, you know, we've only done round, one round of these so far, but I imagine what the panels have been looking for in uh, proposals for um, emerging collective impact projects is how the project that you're applying for, for that year of support, is moving things forward. And so the kind of data you're collecting may really be specifically uh, for a specific project you're trying to solve during that period of time. I, I, we saw a, a presentation from FSG uh, about this exact subject last year, you know, that there's a certain type of data that's collected to move uh, collective impact uh, systems forward, but it's very specific to the project uh, at the period uh, that uh, it's taking place. And here's another question just about how to apply. Can I apply for a collective impact project for the July 2015 deadline and a direct learning project at the f for the February deadline in 2016? Well, we hope that if you're going to apply in the July deadline for a collective impact, you give us a call soon. Um, if you do, certainly you can apply next calendar year for another project. You know, if you apply, some are, are applying for multiple year funding, like a two year collective impact grant. And if you do that and you're awarded a grant for a two year project and you want to apply again in the following year, you want to really make sure that the project in the following year has no overlapping costs. You know, for instance, if uh, there's professional development uh, is something that you're, you're doing on an ongoing uh, way, and collective impact also, you know, the, the professional development that you do is also very involved in your collective impact, you really want to make sure that you know, if you get a collective impact grant that's two years, then in the second year and you're applying for something else, that it's not 
uh, involving um, professional development or the same kind of professional development. No overlapping costs, in other words. So here's a question. I'll, I'll answer this one, Terry. What is the range of the number of partners in current projects? Are there any patterns to the different sectors involved in individual projects? So, you know, what we're really seeing is in terms of kind of the leadership council, the advisory group, kind of the, the key stakeholders at the table, that the number of partners really varies, you know, anywhere from five to 12, just in terms of a leadership council. But the entire kind of initiative usually, you know, is involving coalitions of, um, you know, 100, you know, to 150 kind of community-wide partners, but a lot of it does depend on the size of your community and the assets of your community and the strengths of your community. And one of the, the projects that I mentioned earlier, the Nashville Music Makes Us project out of Metropolitan Nashville Public Schools is really interesting because part of the work that we're funding is for them to do the analysis of kind of who's at the table and to do the analysis of who are the current partners that they have in place. And Terry mentioned this earlier. It's not even so much about the number of partners, but having the right partners at the table and really taking the time to see who is currently a partner, what are the needs of the partnership, and who can you cultivate and bring on to become a partner in the work. And uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, there are 81 different kind of partners across the, the 15 grantees that um, that we're supporting right now. And in terms of the, the pattern of the different sectors, we're really seeing a broad range of, um, you know, cross-sector partners. And this work is really about, you know, getting out of your individual silos and reaching broader across just um, the arts field or the education field and really coming together in a true coalition to define your common vision, um, you know, to, to collect your data, develop a plan based on data, but really a broad sector to do that work. It's not easy work, but it's really um, what we've seen in terms of the applications that have come in, very um, rewarding in terms of laying a, a strong foundation for the work to move forward. So just going back quickly and revisiting some of the types of partnerships we're seeing in this work, we're seeing city and mayor's offices involved, school districts, nonprofit arts organizations, funders and philanthropists, State Departments of Education, for-profit organizations, arts councils, colleges and universities, county offices of education, um, boards of education, um, school reform focus organizations, the media, but it really depends on, you know, the very unique, again, assets in your own particular community. And we've also seen smaller groups coming together. And like I said, doing the, the work of really thinking about who else needs to be at the table and really taking the time to build and cultivate those relationships and those partnerships. And Terry, I have a, another question for you. Uh, this question is, we're just starting out and would like to focus uh, on evaluation. Does the NEA have any resources we can use specifically for collective impact evaluation? Well, developing a common data uh, collection and evaluating something specific that's very important to uh, the goals and the vision of the collective impact partners could be the project that you're applying for. Um, you really want to set it within that ask, remember we're funding collective impact uh, systems. So you really want to f uh, request a project which is focusing on uh, evaluation or uh, collection of specific data as part of the collective impact project. Because we have a research division which is project specifically for research and that's not what the collective impact uh, projects are. You really want to articulate evaluation and collection of data within the context of the collective impact system. And just to add to what Terry mentioned in response to that question, we did show a slide earlier for the collective impact forum. And if you visit www.collectiveimpactforum.org, 
that is a wonderful free resource that has any and everything you could imagine that you wanted to know about collective impact. And there's a lot of information about um, evaluation and shared measurement on that website. And again, it's a, it's a free resource, so I encourage you to take advantage of that. And here's one more question, which I believe is our final question. Will the NEA be sharing any results of the current grantee work with the field? And so the short answer to that is that is our plan, that over time, as we continue to invest in this work, we will be harvesting knowledge. And similar to the webinar that we have this afternoon, where we're looking at kind of insights and trends across the really the applications, we really plan on also looking into um, insights and trends and seeing effective practice across this collective impact arts education work over time. And so uh, we will be harvesting knowledge, uh, having more webinars and potentially even some publications as we move forward about what we're learning about this work, um, where it's working, what some of the challenges are, and um, how collectively we can, we can move the field forward based on, um, based on what we're learning. Oh, here's a question. Can I repeat the resource that I just selected for collective impact? So this is the collective impact forum. And the web address is www.collectiveimpactforum.org. That's www.collectiveimpactforum.org. And just as a reminder, this webinar is going to be archived on the NEA's website at arts.gov. And it will be available in a couple of days. So feel free to um, revisit this website and also um, the three other websites that we've had in our Collective Impact series to learn more about this work. As Terry mentioned, if you're interested in applying for a Collective Impact grant, please be in touch with our office. All of the contact information for each of the four arts education specialists is listed um, at arts.gov under arts education. So please, please be in contact with us before you submit an application. Uh, we encourage it in general, but especially for collective impact. So as we bring this webinar to a close, uh, on this slide, you'll see several ways for you to keep in touch with us. Uh, we do have a newsletter that goes out um, usually quarterly, so I really encourage you to stay abreast with all things arts education at the NEA by uh, signing up for our newsletter, and you'll see the, the address of how to do that on this slide. We want to hear from you in terms of your collective impact, successes, and challenges. And we have a, an address you'll see on here, collectiveimpactedarts.gov. So share with us your stories, especially we had the question of, are we going to be sharing what we're learning? And, and our plan is to harvest knowledge as we move forward. And so we want to hear from you, whether you're an NEA grantee um, or you're thinking about becoming an NEA um, grantee in terms of applying and you've been engaged in this work, please share your stories with us. And then also here is the direct uh, link to the NEA arts education team. And, and please, please be in touch with us with any questions at all. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. And I'd like to thank the arts education team at the NEA for the amazing work that they do every day. As I mentioned earlier, this webinar is going to be archived permanently on the NEA website. And so we encourage you to reference it in the future and to also share it with your colleagues and your partners. Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs>